Hi, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your Vitals Bridge 300 to a GE patient monitor. This particular GE monitor does not support capnography measurements. To see how to connect the capnography function on your Vitals Bridge 300 to a patient monitor, check out one of our other videos or download our instruction manual from vitalsbridge.com downloads. This video can also be used to help you connect your Vitals Bridge 200 to any GE patient monitor. Before beginning this video, I downloaded the Vitals Bridge Connector software from vitalsbridge.com downloads and I installed it on my computer. I also connected my Vitals Bridge to my computer using a USB cable, which I plugged in here and into my computer. You can also use an Ethernet cable to connect your Vitals Bridge, which is plugged in here and to the Ethernet port on your computer, or you can use Bluetooth, which is configured the same way any Bluetooth device is configured with your laptop. If you're not using a computer, you can also use any Android mobile device or tablet to control your Vitals Bridge. Simply download the Vitals Bridge Connector app from the Google Play Store and connect your Vitals Bridge to your electronic device via Bluetooth, the same way you would connect any Bluetooth device. Let's get started. The first vital sign we're going to connect is SPO2. The cable that connects to your patient monitor should look like this. You have one end that plugs into your patient monitor and another end that's going to plug into an SPO2 probe. You're welcome to use any reusable probe for your, for your vitals bridge. Most SPO2 probes look like one of these two options. You have one that's a clip and you have one that's a rubber sleeve. We're going to be using the rubber sleeve today for our demonstration. The first thing you're going to do is connect your SPO2 cable that connects to the patient monitor where it says SPO2. Once you have that plugged in, take your SPO2 probe and plug it into the other end of the cable. Once it's all been connected, put the SPO2 probe on your finger and make sure that you get a reading on your patient monitor. You'll notice how we have a SPO2 waveform as well as an SPO2 saturation percentage and a heart rate. We know that everything is working well there, so we're going to set this aside for a moment and pull out the oximeter adapter which came included with our Vitals Bridge. It should have included a gray box that looks like this as well as a cable that has two matching ends. Plug in one end of this cable to the oximeter adapter box. Plug it in where it says SPO2 port vitals bridge. Once you have that plugged in, plug in the other end of that same cable to where it says SPO2 on your vitals bridge. Then take the finger probe you've already verified works and slide it onto the white finger of the SPO2 oximeter adapter. Once it's in place, you should begin to see an SPO2 waveform, heart rate, and saturation level. And it looks like everything is working perfectly. Just to make sure that our controls are working, I'm gonna come here to the connector software and I'm gonna drop my heart rate. You can pick any number, but I'm just gonna pick 60. Notice how the heart rate on your patient monitor is also going to drop down to 60 beats per minute. It looks like everything's working well there. You can also test this function with the SpO2 saturation level. One thing to note is that the SpO2 saturation level that's shown on your patient monitor may not match what you have on your connector software. That's okay, it's a really easy fix. Come up here to the configuration tab in your connector software and perform an SpO2 calibration that's specific to your patient monitor. I'm not going to show you how to perform that calibration today, but instructions can be found on vitalsbridge.com downloads. Once you have that signal calibrated, the number that you input into your connector software should perfectly match the SpO2 saturation level that you see on your patient monitor. We're gonna move this aside and let's start on the next vital sign. The next vital signs we're going to connect is ECG. 
The ECG cable for your patient monitor should look something like this. You have one end that plugs into the patient monitor and one end that has your ECG leads on it. Our cable also includes what we call a filter box. This smooths out any electrical signals that may make your ECG waveform look messy. The vitals bridge will work perfectly with the filter box or without, it doesn't matter. Take the end that plugs into the patient monitor and put it in where it says ECG. Once that's been plugged in, we need to connect the leads to our vitals bridge. Each lead comes with a stripe of color as well as two little letters. I'm going to be using a five lead ECG cable, but you can use a three or four lead as well and it will work just as, just as well on our, your vitals bridge. Simply connect the ECG leads to the buttons on your vitals bridge where the colors and letters match. So we'll connect the black lead to where it says LA on our patient monitor and has the black stripe. We'll connect the white or gray lead to the spot where it says LA. We'll connect the brown lead to where it says V. We'll connect the red re lead to where it says LL. And we'll connect the green lead to where it says RL. Once you have all of the leads connected, you should see an ECG waveform begin to appear on your patient monitor. After just a moment, you should also see a heart rate. This heart rate should match closely what you have for a heart rate on your SpO2. You'll notice that they're just about the same, which is exactly what we would hope. Just to make sure everything's working well, I'm gonna come over here again and drop my heart rate down to 60 beats per minute. And you'll see the heart rate beginning to drop on your patient monitor. I'm also going to double check my ECG waveform. I'm gonna come here to the Vitals Bridge Connector software and I'm gonna change my ECG rhythm. I'm going to change it to Astol. When I change it, you'll notice how it goes flat, which is exactly what we would expect. So I'm gonna change that back to the normal sinus function and I'm gonna bring my heart rate back up. We know that everything is working the way it should be. All right, the next thing we're going to connect is temperature. The Vitals Bridge 300 has the capability of displaying two different temperature readings. This, this particular patient monitor also can display two different temperature readings. We're going to be connecting both for this video, though you can connect only one if that's what you would like to do. The temperature cable for your patient monitor should look something like this. You have one end that plugs into the monitor and you have another end that can accept cables. Included with your vitals bridge, you should have received temperature cables that look like these. The temperature cables have one end that plugs into the cord that connects to your patient monitor and one end that's going to plug in directly to your vitals bridge. So we'll take the cord that came with your patient monitor and you'll plug it in where it says temp. Once you have that plugged in, take one of your temperature cables that came with your vitals bridge and plug it in to where it says T1 on your patient monitor cable. Then take the other end and plug it in where it says T1 on your vitals bridge. And repeat the same thing with T2. Plug one end into where it says T2 and that same cable into your vitals bridge where it also says T2. Once you have those connections made, you should see two temperatures appear on the bottom of your GE screen. And those two temperatures should match what you have in your Vitals Bridge connector software. Just to make sure everything is working well, I'm gonna drop temperature one down to 36 degrees. And you'll notice that temperature one here will also drop to 36 degrees, which is exactly what we'd expect. I'm gonna bring it back up, and if you would like, you can perform a similar test on temperature two. The next thing we're going to connect is invasive blood pressures. The invasive blood pressure cord for your vitals bridge should look like this. You have one end that plugs into the patient monitor and another end that's going to plug in to a small cord that looks like this that was included with your vitals bridge. 
Take the cord that plugs in to your cable, the one that came with your vitals bridge, and connect it there. Then take the other end and plug it in where it says BP on your patient monitor. When you plug it in, you should see a little spot appear on your patient monitor. This particular one says ART for arterial blood pressure. That means that this particular port on your patient monitor is the one that reads arterial blood pressure. So we're gonna plug in the other end of that same cable to where it says ABP on our vitals bridge. It's important that you connect the correct port to the correct port on your vitals bridge so that you get the correct waveform readings. Next, we're gonna connect the second invasive blood pressure cable. I've already connected the cable that came included with our vitals bridge to the patient monitor cable. I'll plug it into the second blood pressure spot on my patient monitor. And notice how it says CVP. That means that this is going to be a CVP invasive blood pressure reading. So we can plug in the other end to where it says CVP on our vitals bridge. We have one more invasive blood pressure. And we'll take it and plug it into the last BP section on our patient monitor. And notice how we now have a section for a pack. So we'll take the other end of that same cable and plug it in where it says PAP on our vitals bridge. Just to make sure that all of our blood pressures get readings that are calibrated, you'll notice how it says here that we need to zero each of those invasive blood pressures. Before we zero them on the patient monitor, we need to come here to the connector software and check these boxes that say zero ABP, zero PAP, and zero CVP. Once we have each of these check boxes selected, you'll see the, the lines on our patient monitor go flat. Then you can select the button that says zero all. That's going to zero each of these blood pressures as needed. Once they've been zeroed, we can uncheck these boxes. If you don't have a zero all button or you can't find it, another way to zero the blood pressures is to come up and select whichever blood pressure you would like to zero. And then you can zero that same blood pressure via this menu. So since I've successfully zeroed all of my different blood pressures, I'm going to come here and uncheck each of these zeroing boxes. And we should see beautiful invasive blood pressure waveforms as well as invasive blood pressure readings. If you aren't seeing waveforms that you like, you can also adjust the scale on your patient monitor. Check out your monitor's instruction manuals for more instructions on how to do that. Alrighty, the last thing we're going to do is connect our non-invasive blood pressure. The non-invasive blood pressure cable for your patient monitor should look something like this. You've got one end that plugs into your patient monitor and one end that plugs into a blood pressure cuff. Your cable may be a one tube or a two tube non-invasive blood pressure cable. We'll plug in the end that goes to our patient monitor where it says NBP. And then for this other end, we're going to need to make an adapter. With your vitals bridge, you should have received a small bag that looks like this, that says NIBP fitting kit. Depending on if you have a one tube or a two tube non-invasive blood pressure system, you'll use a different piece of tubing that's included with this non-invasive blood pressure kit. Since we're using a two tube, non-invasive blood pressure cable, I'm going to pull out this Y adapter. If you were using a one tube, you would pull out this single tube adapter. Once you have this removed, go through each of the fittings included with this blood pressure fitting kit and find two that are going to fit onto either end of this non-invasive blood pressure cable. Once you have the two fittings that fit here, you'll insert them into these two ends of your non-invasive blood pressure adapter. I already have one made that's specific to my 
non-invasive blood pressure cable on this monitor. It looks like this. Once you have your adapter made, connect it to the blood pressure cuff end of your cable. Then take the pre-configured end of that same adapter and connect it to your vitals bridge where it says NBP. Once that's connected, you can perform a non-invasive blood pressure reading on your patient monitor. There are two ways you can do this. The first way is you can come into your vitals into your patient monitor screen and select where it says NBP. Once you've selected that, you can set up an auto reading for your NBP. This auto reading can be at any frequency from one minute to every 12 hours. Though it's important to note that if you have frequent NBP readings on your vitals bridge and you are using the battery, the battery will not last as long with the more frequent non-invasive blood pressure readings. The other way you can do it is you can come to your patient monitor where it says NBP, go slash start, and you can push that button to get a single NBP reading. You should hear some small clicking and vibrational noises in your patient monitor as well as your vitals bridge. That's normal. That means it's correctly simulating an NBP reading. It will take just a minute for the NBP reading to show up, but when it does, it should show up here on your patient monitor. If an NBP reading you get on your patient monitor doesn't perfectly match what you have in your Vitals Bridge Connector software, that's okay. Rerun the reading and you should get something closer to what you have set. Though you shouldn't expect the reading to ever be exactly what you have set in your connector software because the non-invasive blood pressure reading technology in your patient monitor is not perfect. You'll see we've got a wonderful reading for a non-invasive blood pressure. So we know that everything is working well with our patient monitor and our Vitals Bridge connections. You can continue, you can, can continue to control the Vitals Bridge using the connector software in the manual tab. Though you can also use any, you can use any Laridol simulator to control your Vitals Bridge. To connect to a simulator, come here to the simulator tab in your Vitals Bridge connector software. Any simulator you currently have running will show up in this screen here. I have a virtual simulator running on my laptop. I'm going to connect to it by selecting the simulator and then pressing connect. Once you've connected successfully, you should see a screen that looks like this in your Vitals Bridge connector software that shows the vital signs that your connector software is receiving from the simulator. But notice how some of our vital signs have disappeared on our patient monitor. That's really easy to fix. Come to your simulator, and on the bottom of your simulation screen, you should see these checkboxes with different vital signs. You need to make sure those checkboxes have been checked. This tells the patient simulator software that you do have a vitals bridge connected and that those signals should be being displayed. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to check that I have a PAP signal, an ABP signal, an SPO2 signal, an ECG reading, and temperature. Once I've selected each of those checkboxes, those vital signs should reappear on our patient monitor. You can then control any of these vital signs via the patient simulator software. Or you can go back to the manual tab of your Vitals Bridge Connector software and control them from there. Well, that's how to connect your Vitals Bridge 300 to a GE patient monitor. I hope it was helpful and good luck.